Hello and welcome to Neighborhood Nature. My name is Lisa and I'm a librarian at St. Albert Public Library and my co-host is Hannah who is a U of A student in animal biology. On this week's episode we will meet a caterpillar's worst nightmare, a slithery guest, and more. We were walking along a forested area in a residential area and we're just kind of looking around at everything and then we look down and there is a slithery snake. One of us screamed. It was Definitely not Hannah that screamed, Um, but it's pretty cool. It's a very small snake though. It was about 15 centimeters long. And when it saw us, it curled itself into a kind of coil and stuck its head up with its mouth open and made a very loud hissing noise. So it sounds like it was probably more scared of us than we were of it. Well, I'm not sure about that. Suddenly it, it scooted away into the grass and we didn't find it afterwards. So we suspect it might've had a burrow in the grass. This is a garter snake, and it's probably the most common snake you'll find in your neighborhood. They are harmless. They're more apt to flee from you than do anything else. Like we saw here. Although they may try to make you think they're dangerous, like this one did, by rearing up and opening its mouth and hissing. Here's something else that tries to look more dangerous than it is. It's a bee fly. We've featured bee flies before in Neighborhood Nature, but we've never had one on that looks like this one. This photo is really dark, but we think this might be in the genus Hemipenthes, which means half-veiled and black, which is a very good name. If you'd like to see bees and bee flies, a great place to see them right now is at St. Albert Botanical Gardens. It's just filled with bees right now, and that's where we saw this one here in the photo. It's hard to tell from this footage, but this bee is very large. It's almost an inch long, and it was way bigger than any of the other bees there. We don't know what kind it is, but if anyone knows, then feel free to comment below. There's lots of really pretty wildflowers still around, like this yarrow. You can recognize it by its frilly leaves. Um, It's really pretty, and a lot of the pollinators love it. Although there are still flowers around right now, a lot of them are starting to produce fruits. And these are the fruits of a false Solomon seal. And we saw this plant several weeks ago when it was still flowering. And it's got these tiny little white flowers, but you won't see those now because they turn into fruits. If you look closely at the plants, you might see one of these. This is a ladybug pupa. And they vary quite a bit in color. This one is a lighter yellow with black. Sometimes they're a darker orange. A lot of people see them on their plants and they think that it's a foe and no it's not. It is actually a ladybug pupa so it is not harmful to your plants. And here is what hatched out of the pupa. It's a ladybug. You might remember that we talked about woolly bear caterpillars on last week's episode and we found this near some woolly bear caterpillars. Would you believe it's a wasp? First of all, the big long stinger on the end is not actually a stinger, so don't freak out. This is actually what the wasp uses to lay its eggs. And the reason why it's so long is because it uses it to drill down into probably wood. And the reason it does this is to find some kind of insect larva to lay its eggs inside, which is kind of gross, but that's what they do. And these types of wasps are actually beneficial to the plant that the insect larva is in because it kills larva. Because they parasitize larva, they're called parasitoid wasps. You might be thinking that this looks an awful lot like a fishing lure, and you're correct, it does. People actually make fishing lures to look like this. This is a mayfly. Coincidentally, their family name is Betidae. You might notice that the eyes on this mayfly look a little strange. And this is because they're very large and they're actually pointing up at the sky instead of sideways or forward, like other insects. Because it has this type of eyes, we know that this is a male mayfly. And there's some disagreement over why they have these huge eyes, but they definitely look strange. Thanks for watching Neighborhood Nature. Tune in next week to our final episode of Neighborhood Nature, and we'll see you next week.